Rotary's relationship with peace is a very, very rich history. We've been involved in many areas, as I'll tell you, uh, right since the inception of the organization in 1905. Between 1905 and 1914, Rotary in America grew quite quickly, not so fast overseas, uh, because in Europe in particular, war was about to break out. The Great War, World War I, started in 1914. In 1914, at the Rotary International Convention in Houston, Rotarians resolved to establish a peace conference, and Rotarians began to get more involved in peace. That was the first time when peace became an important part of Rotary's agenda. In 1917, in Atlanta, as I'm sure you all know, Arch Clunk formed the uh, Rotary Foundation. Again, another step in Rotary's journey towards promoting peace. And later this month, later this year, we will celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Foundation in Atlanta. In 1920, in London, at the convention, Rotarians resolved to uh, adopt what we now know as the fourth object of Rotary, advancing international understanding, peace and goodwill. And in Edinburgh, in 19, uh, 1921, that resolution was formally adopted. Throughout the 1920s and the 1930s, Rotary around the world became very strong. In fact, by the end of the 1930s, Rotary was one of the strongest non-governmental non organizations in the world. Had a very significant role to play in, in world affairs. In 1940, uh, in Havana, Cuba, of all places, Rotarians met for the International Convention and they resolved uh, to adopt a resolution calling for, amongst other things, the protection of human rights. And that resolution became the basis of the UN Declaration of Human Rights, which was adopted in 1948. It's quite amazing now to think that uh, when Rotary pulled out of Cuba in 1979, there were 58 Rotary clubs in Cuba. And we hope that very soon Rotary will be reinstated in, in Cuba. The next most significant uh, event in Rotary's history was in 1945, the chartering of the uh, United Nations in San Francisco. Eleven members of the US delegation were Rotarians. 49 Rotarians were present at that historic event, representing other countries as delegates, as interpreters, as consultants, as advisors. And that reflected the enormous significance of Rotary worldwide uh, at that time. Rotary's relationship with the UN continues. We are one of only two organizations that have the highest level of consultative status with the UN. We have five Rotarians in New York who are permanently accredited to the United Nations. And one of them attends every session of the UN Economic and Social Council. Uh, the other organization is the Red Cross. Every year we have a Rotary event at the UN. And all the senior leadership and many Rotarians from around the the New York and surrounding areas <coughs> come to the United Nations, often the, the General Secretary, Secretary General of the United Nations speaks to us, again reflecting the significance of Rotary in the formation of, of the United Nations. So let, let me, there's lots more I'd like to tell you about the history. Uh, in 1966, we had the first peace city, a city that declared itself a city of peace. It was in Australia. Now we have over, city, over 60 cities around the world that have become cities of peace. In the late 1990s, in order to commemorate the passing of Paul, the 50th anniversary of the, of the passing of Paul Harris, some of the senior Rotarians wanted to establish a peace university, a peace academy. In the event, they decided to form a peace fellowship program. And Rotary has uh, since then partnered with six university six universities around the world, and you can, you can read them. Uh, Duke University and University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill is, a, is a, a joined program, and we have universities in Uppsala, in the United Kingdom, in Queensland, in Japan. They provide a master's program, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. <clears throat> they were selected after a worldwide selection process. Uh, they offered, uh, courses which are not offered at that time anywhere else in the world. 
they're in the cutting edge of peace and conflict resolution study. In 2006, we added a sixth university to the Longkorn University in Bangkok, Thailand, which provides a three-month uh, certificate program. So the master's program offers, uh, it's a 15 to 24 month uh, term. In between year one and year two, the fellows do what's called an applied field experience, an internship paid for by Rotary, and they can go anywhere in the world uh, to spend two or three months uh, learning about peace and development, peace and conflict resolution, <coughs> peace and other areas of focus uh, at the World Bank, at the United Nations, at all sorts of organizations around the world. And at the end of their period of study, uh, they have a seminar in which they uh, describe briefly the results of their, of their research, their, the thesis that they're, they're doing. If you haven't been to a, a peace seminar, uh, there's one on, May, on April the 1st in Chapel Hill, Duke University. It's, it's a wonderful experience. It's quite hard to get a seat. It's a very popular event. So I, I commend you the idea of going down to Chapel Hill and sitting in on one of the, one of the sessions. The certificate program uh, is for slightly older people, uh, people who've been in the area of peace and conflict resolution for a few more years. Uh, and again, it's a fairly intensive program in Bangkok, coupled with various field visits to Nepal, to uh, Philippines, to Sri Lanka, other places, getting some field experience. In terms of funding, you'll see on the graph, the green is the endowment fund. This, this program costs Rotary about $5 million a year. So the green is the endowment fund, that's the permanent fund that it was created to finance this program. The red is the World Fund, which is where contributions that you make to Rotary go. And yellow is, is district designated funds. These are funds which clubs and districts give to Rotary for a particular purpose. So you'll see the breakdown of, of how the program is funded. <coughs> Paul mentioned that this district is a uh, peace builder district. I'm very impressed with that. There are only 35 districts around the world that are peace builder districts. So I commend you and your district on being a peace builder district. This is a district that has committed to give $25,000 of district designated funds each year. And it's a great contribution to, to the program. So the, the goal uh, to finance this program was $150 million uh, to be uh, achieved by the end of June this year. In fact, we achieved the goal late last year by where we've got 151 million. We would have got that figure much more quickly had it not been for polio. That 151 million has been contributed to by just over 4,000 donors, many of whom have given multi-million dollar uh, contributions to the fund. It's, it's, a, it's the second biggest fund in the Rotary world. Um, we have just increased the, the goal for next year by another 15 million. And we are likely to increase that goal. Uh, receiving contributions for the Peace Endowment Fund has not been at all difficult. Many Rotarians are, are very keen to do what they can to, to promote peace. So that's the, that's the fund. Uh, the earnings on that fund go towards paying for the, the scholars. Uh, there's a stipend from the universities. Uh, there's a contribution towards a peace symposium. But the earnings are not yet enough, uh, so that's why Rotary has to dip into the World Fund to subsidize the cost of the program. So where can you get scholars from? Uh, where and how to recruit? Organizations involved in peace building, alumni, uh, past peace fellows, uh, organizations involved in peace. There are many sources of getting the peace candidates. Each year we get about 1,000 applicants. Um, last year we had 424 qualified applicants. These were applicants who were actually interviewed, which is really quite a phenomenal amount. And we give out uh, just under 100 scholarships a year, 100 fellowships a year. So you've got just over one in four chance of getting a fellowship, which is a pretty good, uh, pretty good odds. The uh, average age, just over 30 for a master's degree just over 40 for the certificate program. So this is not a program 
for young people who haven't quite worked out what to do in life. So let's go back to university for a year or two and put off the evil moment. This is for people who are really, really committed in some form uh, to peace and conflict resolution. We have uh, a wide variety of recruits. We have law enforcement, we have police, we have military, we have academics, we have uh, uh, people involved in, in all sorts of peace communities. We have lawyers, we have journalists, we even have artists. Uh, a wide variety of, of occupations, uh, particularly for the certificate program. and applications received from over 85 countries. It's, this is a very sought after, very popular uh, fellowship. We, we hope in time that the Rotary Peace Fellowship will be on a par with the Rhodes and the Fulbright and the Harkness and the, uh, the other uh, well-known peace, uh, well-known fellowships around the world. So the application timeline, applications are open now. <coughs> if you go online, you can uh, get, the, get the form and fill it out. The first step is to be interviewed by clubs. Uh, then the nominations go to the district level and they're interviewed at the district level by May the 1st. Then the application goes to Evanston, the headquarters of Rotary International in, in, uh, just outside of Chicago. Uh, <coughs> at that stage, the, the uh, applications are reviewed by uh, a series of Rotarians who are uh, recruited for this purpose and by the staff. The selection committee meets in September and the uh, results are announced in October. So it's a fairly tight timeline. Uh, but if you're interested, you really need to start the process now because if, if you need to get references, you need to get uh, a fair amount of paperwork. So the alumni, 38% working for NGOs, uh, a large number working for government agencies, 7% uh, working for the World Bank, something like 12% working for the United Nations, all over the world. Uh, and in the, in the next slide, this is a slide to, to show you where the Peace Fellows are currently based. It may be hard to see this, but basically they're all over the world. We have a large number, something like 35% are, are Americans. Americans can go to any one of the centers except the one in America. You can't go to a university in your own, your own country. All, this, all the centers conduct their programs in English, even the one in Japan. So Japanese students are allowed to go to the one in Japan if they speak English. Uh, and we have a number each year that get to. <coughs> so what's in it for the clubs? This is a fun experience. To, to be working with these peace fellows, I've been involved for the last 10 or 12 years. I've got to know many of them. These are the creme de la creme. These are really phenomenal people. What they're doing overseas, if I had more time, I'd give you lots of vignettes of what the, the Peace Fellows are doing in Afghanistan and Sudan. All the hotspots around the world, we have Peace Fellows. Some are working in local community. I was given the example of a, uh, a lady who came back from the Thai program last, uh, last August. Uh, she lives in Baltimore, and she's actively involved now working with Rotary Clubs in and around the city of Baltimore, which is in my district, and law enforcement to help relieve tensions arising out of the riots in Baltimore last year. And there are many other examples around the country where Rotarians are working with peace fellows to help with uh, community involvement and mediate uh, issues. Um, peace fellows are working with uh, refugees. They're working on trafficking issues, drug issues, in all sorts of uh, different parts of the world. So it's an exciting program to be associated with. We can find the Peace Fellows for you. I think last year, this district funded or, or nominated three Peace Fellows, which I think were, came from other parts of the world. In some parts of Africa, for instance, uh, where Rotary is not as strong, it's very hard for Peace Fellows to find a club, to find a district, to nominate them. So working with Rotary International, we arranged for various districts around the world to be the sponsor of those, of those fellows, and you've had three that were selected last year, which, which is wonderful. All credit to the district for doing that. And of course, this, this all leads to peace and goodwill and understanding. I, I have a lot to do with uh, uh, peace fellows in Washington. I was heavily involved in forming uh, a Rotary Club four years ago, an alumni club. Uh, there were 42 members. Half the members were Rotary alumni. 
the president, the vice president, the treasurer, one of the directors, were all peace fellows. Wrote, uh, Washington is a city that attracts peace fellow type people. So we have a large number. In my club, we've had four different peace fellows. They tend not to stay very long. They come in for two or three years, and then they get rotated out. We work for the State Department or the USAID. But we've had one peace fellow who's, who was in the club, who then left on a, a State Department assignment, came back for two years, rejoined the club, and now he's gone away again. And I'm sure that when he completes his next assignment, he'll come back to the club. So it's, that's rather a nice aspect of being based in Washington, D.C. So looking to the future, uh, last weekend I was in San Diego. Uh, with, I serve on a committee that's looking to the next phase of the Rotary Peace Centre program. We're looking to uh, possibly increase centres. We don't have a centre in the Middle East. We don't have a centre in Africa. There's a lot of pressure uh, to establish centres in that part of the world. We find that the, the, the greatest impact of the fellowship is more at the, at the three month certificate program than it is at the master's program. So we may not have too many more master's programs, but I think we will see over the next 10 or 15 years more certificate programs. Um, so that's quite an exciting development. We're also looking at developing peace academies. Many Rotarians around the world want to be more informed about peace issues. They want to find a way to contribute. So Rotary is thinking about peace academies, peace workshops, we had a situation uh, last November, uh, a group of very actively involved Rotarians in California sponsored a conference on peace in Uganda, where you didn't come from, <laughs> uh, for 150 Rotaractors. U Uganda is a very strong Rotary country. There are something like 65 Rotary clubs and there were 64 Rotary clubs. So this was an exciting development. Uh, just as an aside, I. I met a guy last year in Washington, 34 years old, uh, born in a refugee camp in Canada, in uh, Kenya. He was five years old before he got his first pair of underpants. He was 12 years old before he got his first pair of shoes. Somehow or other he came through the system, ended up going to Harvard. Two years ago, he was nominated by Secretary General Ban Ki-moon of the United Nations to be, to be the UN Ambassador for Peace. As you may know, uh, in 2015, the United Nations adopted the Sustainable Development Goals, which are the, uh, provide the framework for international development for the next 15 years. And for the first time in the history of the world, peace is a goal of the United Nations, and therefore of the international community. And every one of the goals is a goal for water, uh, for literacy, and so on. Everyone has a peace ambassador, and this 34-year-old man has become the peace ambassador uh, for the UN. He was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize last year. He was uh, considered by Forbes magazine to be one of the top 10 most influential Africans in, uh, uh, in, in terms of developing Africa as a, as a more vibrant part of the world. Quite an exciting uh, young man, and he's working, he worked with Rotary for this program I mentioned in Uganda. Uh, so there's a lot happening in the Rotary world. We're developing partnerships with uh, the Institute for Economics and Peace, which promotes the Global Peace Index. Rotary is more and more <coughs> thinking of peace in terms of peace and water, peace and literacy, peace and disease prevention, uh, peace becoming the, the main uh, area of focus, helping with the other areas of focus. So it's an exciting time to be in Rotary. Um, I uh, have been incredibly fortunate to have been so involved in the the Rotary Peace Centers Committee, and I will be chairing the committee for another year, which I'm delighted about. Uh, and I think we're going to see more and more emphasis on peace. Once we eradicate polio, and we will eradicate polio, uh, I think we'll see more and more emphasis on Rotary's role in promoting peace. Uh, that's not to say we're going to solve some of the Arab-Israeli disputes or that sort of dispute, but we will be involved uh, more directly in, in community work, working with law enforcement, work, working with uh, uh, police communi policing communities around the world. Uh, Rotarians are becoming more and more perceived as citizen diplomats, and I think that's an exciting uh, dimension for Rotary. 